Welcome to Rugby IQ, where we're joined by world-renowned referee, Johnny Kaplan. Johnny, thank you very much for being with us. Pleasure. Okay, what are we going to do today? I'll then ask Johnny one or two questions. Is uh, In an earlier blog uh, that many of you may have seen, uh, what I did, Johnny, is I did an analysis of Honey Crusoe before the Super 14 started. Yeah. And what I did is I took five clips from last year, during the course of the year, where uh, the referees were um, Alan Rolland, and Bryce Lawrence predominantly, Wayne Barnes was the referee in one of the games. And what I did is I had a look at five incidents in the international season that Heinrich got a penalty. And I said in the blog that um, I thought that with the new law, or not the new law, but the new interpretation of the law at the breakdown, where the tackler needs to roll away, and of course the important thing you told me about the other day is the first arriving player on the defensive team, what his role needs to be. Yeah. So what I thought is maybe you could have a look at it with me. I think, um, I, I, I think I am wrong on one or two of them in terms of the way they're being interpreted at the moment. Yeah. Even though I believe that uh, um, Bryce and, and Alain and, and those guys who gave the penalties at the time were entitled to do so as the way the game has been ref last year. Correct. I'm correct in saying that, that the interpretation has changed, hasn't it? Correct. The emphasis is on the, the defender to allow the ball carrier... All his options. Okay, so let's have a look over here. Let's have a look and see what we've got over here. Um, I'm going to play the video for you over here, and uh, so just have a look at the the, the the first couple of clips that we did, and I'd like your comment on it. So what I was saying over here, this is actually the blog that we had last time. I'm just going to play it for you. I'm going to say that Heinrich is the arriving player over there, as you can see. Yeah. I'll highlight now in a second. So the primary tackle is made by Ruam, and there you can see Heinrich is joining over there. I showed with the arrow. And as we let the clip go on, Heinrich gets his hands on the ball, which I thought was really good rugby, uh, very good strategy as well. He remains on his feet, and this is really significant because we were chatting earlier where you told me that this is actually where the interpretation is different now. He has aided the guy going to the ground, and strictly speaking at this moment in time, if I'm correct, he has to release the guy. Yeah, um, yeah you are right. There is um, a point which needs to be made. Um, and that is that if an Italian player had joined onto the ball carrier prior to the tackle being made, in other words... One of his own more, teammates. One of his own yes, teammates. Yes, which would more, constitute the more. More defence is different from a tackle defence. I understand. Okay? So if, if that was... Technically there was someone touching him, but let's just say, for example, you know, for argument's sake, that that was just a tackle, a tackle situation... Uh, the South African would have had to let go first before going back in. If that was a more situation, he never has to let go because his his uh, role is is uh, differently defined because it doesn't fall under tackle. Right. Have a look at this clip and tell me what you see in this clip over here. And tell me if you're happy with with his role over here. There you can see him. I'll reverse the video quickly. There you can see he's not the primary tackler. Now he is. He pushes the guy to the floor. And he's, and he's over the ball. Yeah. In that situation, he still has he still has to let go first before he goes back in. Under the new interpretation. Yeah. He, the, the, there isn't a tackle, actually. A tackle... Even though I'm showing you over there that he's still on his feet. Yep. Okay. The, what, what you can see there is that a tackler... There is no tackler, because a tackler is defined as someone who's, who was on his knee. Yes. Right? So there is no tackler there, but he is deemed to have effected a tackle. And so a tackle has taken place. Even though John initially was the one who made the tackle, no, slipped well, there's, off there's, him. there's no tackle because John's contact point was in the air. Right. Right? Right. Oh, then, yeah. then the player carried on running into Heinrich and, um, and then Heinrich pushed him to ground whilst retaining control over the player. I understand. He didn't push him down and then attack the ball, which is different. Right. So in this situation, would he be penalised? Or... Does he still get the penalty now at this particular situation? No, in this situation, the penalty would go the other go way. against him, yeah. He, Quite interesting that the game has changed that significantly, that an incident that he was entitled to get a penalty for last year, he's actually now penalisable. Yes. Of course, fascinating. Yeah. And, it's, and all, all it really boils down to is a change of emphasis. I mean, the law was there, the law was actually there from May 2009. Right. Um... But I think I think it's actually correct. You know, I, d I don't think this is a, a willy-nilly uh, approach to trying to make life difficult for players and coaches. I actually think it's trying to make life simpler for them. And also, like I said to you earlier, um, it's about giving confidence to the attack yes. to be able to sustain an attack. 
yeah. without fear of whether they are, are execute correctly or not being penalized for right. you know things like holding on as an example and i think the lawmakers set out to really a, a, attempt to make the game more attractive yeah. and for the attacking team to want to hold on to the ball and not keep possession away as that, as they were exactly that's exactly the point so the rationale is really sound logic and it's it's a it's actually a good decision by lawmakers to to make that change absolutely i'm 100 percent in favor of it and i think it'll be um for the benefit of rugby in general. Yeah. You'll find the game becoming a more attractive game. And then it's up to you guys. You know, It's up to the coaches to find different ways of uh, stopping the attack. Yeah, and it, as, long as, as long as referees are consistent in, in their approach to the cleaners, the arriving players, um, still allowing a contest, you know, still allowing the defence options to attack uh, the ball, to attack the opposition, to yes. make it difficult for them legally, um, you know, you know that that's that's the role of you got you, you, that's your role nowadays you, you've yeah. got to keep moving with the game keep trying to refine and and define new uh, systems yeah which is really which which and, and as we were discussing earlier as well and we'll share with the rugby iq uh, uh, viewers as well that, that's really what the emphasis of the game should be about it should be an attractive spectacle people don't want to pay money to come and watch a kick fest and if you consider that out of the four interpretations you guys were asked to have a look at at the beginning of this year two of them have had a significant effect on, on teams being able to play more running rugby. The one was the one we're just discussing now, which is the breakdown. And the other one is the, is, is the strictness that you guys and your assistant referees have been asked to monitor that when a team does kick a ball, that any players of his in front of him remain on, in an onside position. Can only be put onside in three different ways, but did you guys have been asked to monitor that particularly closely? Yeah, exactly. So the rationale is uh, if you kick the ball away, and the opposition want to counter-attack, that they'll be given an opportunity to counter-attack. And so when there's more space, because your players have been told to stand still and not keep moving forward, then obviously there's more confidence on the part of the uh, ball carrier to take the ball back. Right, okay. So that's all that we've got at the moment now for Rugby IQ. John, thank you very much for joining us. Okay. It's been fantastic to have your views. One of the top referees in the world. And uh, so there you have it, folks. I think... Uh, the blog I did earlier in the year, I was probably quite wrong.